it's been a gas. You know, it's just been so much fun. I think it's it, it's great feeling that you know the writers all, all know me now and, and, and sort of want want to write for me. Uh, and I think because uh, Clara and the Doctor feel more in a groove, I think that they are they they are really enjoying being the luckiest people in all of history because they get to play with this immense toy box which is time and space in the universe and they throw themselves recklessly you know uh, in, in, into the pursuit of adventure uh, which is lovely that's a whole kind of different tone that's a whole kind of you know it's daredevil it's fun it's uh, witty and it's clever uh, we also have men in rubber suits pretending to be monsters, which <laughs> is one of the great things about Doctor Who. You will always have there's there's, there's a B movie element that still survives along with uh, uh, the philosophical uh, uh, Freudian element. Yes, but the effects did get a lot better. <laughs> you know, the, effect, the effects are fabulous, but I mean, I think one of the great, you know, one of my most people say, "What was it like?" When did you first feel like Doctor Who? I think it was when they threw a rubber spider in my face and said, <laughs> and said fight it. <laughs> and I said, like, doesn't it work? Where's the operator? They said, there is no operator. It's just a big rubber spider. <laughs> fight it. <laughs> so yeah, that was great. How's, how's Series 9 been for you? Uh, me. Oh, uh, <laughs> it's been um, it's been good. It's been this kind of a, a, a freedom, I think, to us both being in our it's our glory years, um, and it, it's kind of really adrenaline fueled and all about living in the moment and uh, pushing the adventure right up to the edge. And obviously, with that comes uh, quite extraordinary danger. Um, but it's been it's just been very fun. Do you think she's running at all from, I mean, you know, there was a, she suffered a pretty great tragedy at the end of last season. I think so. I think it's a change of perspective and uh, a change of, uh, you know, the idea that life is short and I want to live it and feel it and feel alive and eat up time and space and hang out with my best mate in the TARDIS. And I think that's all, all she wants. Yeah. I mean, it's just... The idea that you could do that and still be a teacher, have been a teacher at the same time. I mean, can you, do you think a companion could ever have a normal life again at what, once their lives have been touched in that way? She's a multitasker, I think. <laughs> um, I, I, but I think that's part of the problem is, is that once you've, once you've kind of eked open and, and, and opened that cupboard and seen all of time and space, how do you go back? How do you go back to living on Earth and, and living a normal life? I think that's, um, I think it becomes addictive and I think that's probably part of the problem. Yeah. Um, for you, Michelle, at the end of last season, we saw you vanish. You seemed sad. Not that the plan didn't work so much. It's just like, oh, I guess I don't get to have my friend after all. So what type of renewed energy do you feel like is taking you into Series 9? Like, where is she, where is she going to be coming from now? Uh, she has to come at it from a different angle, um, and um, which is uh, kind of surprising and... and and exciting to play as well. It's a slightly different uh, dynamic to her. Um, and to be honest, I still can't quite believe that they've asked me back. And um, so I'm still kind of, you know, um, relishing that. And um, so she's, yeah, there's something that's slightly different to her. And I don't know whether it's because of the time it's taken um, to finish uh, the last series and then come to this one, what she's been doing in between, we can only imagine, probably taking tea with the Queen. Um, <laughs> she does quite like tea. Um, so, I don't know, we'll, you just wait and see, it's all very good. Am, am I crazy for, for thinking that, feels like with this doctor, he just lets anyone on the, like, there were so many different people who were just like, sure, come on, I'm a time traveler, time and space, <laughs> bay, yeah. whatever. It, like in, I feel like in previous seasons they were a little they were trying to guard that a little more. And they're like, doors open, come in. Let's all you go to school here, get in here. Come on, we'll take you to the you know. I mean, it, it seemed like there was a much more of an open door policy with the TARDIS in series eight. Well, Peter's got such a friendly face. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I didn't particularly I wasn't really aware of it. Um, I think the doctor's got more relaxed here. 
mean, in the old series, uh, at the beginning, he was very, very strict about who got on board the TARDIS. And yeah, it's true, but for quite a long while now, he's just basically saying, yes, it's bigger on the inside, get over it. It's right. fantastic for story. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, if you think about it, and I used to think about this when I was a kid watching the show, and I bet I'm not the only one. I used to wonder why the Doctor didn't more often use that as a, you know, no, I really am an alien from Mars. You don't believe me? Okay, look at that. That's... That's an alien from outer space, isn't it? Okay, it's bigger on the inside. Why didn't he ever do that? Is what I always used to wonder when I was a kid. Yeah. I see it was only me. <laughs> <laughs> My mum was right. I should have got a girlfriend instead. <laughs> <laughs> Applause for my imaginary girlfriend. <laughs> okay. Virginity kept me pure. <laughs> Peter, do you feel like... Uh, do you think he's becoming... Gentler? Do you feel like it's passion, or do you feel like? I mean, do you think he's a? Do you think he's a super nice guy? Do I think he's a nice guy? Yeah, because he comes off kind of abrasive sometimes to people, and he's, he's just, fabulous. He's a wonderful guy. He's a guy you, you really want to hang around with. He's he's incredible. He's a laugh. <laughs> he's uh, he's great looking. <laughs> he's terrifically live for his age. Yeah. Um. No, I think he's, you know, I, you know we, we sort of live in a world where everybody's supposed to be so, everybody's so easy, everything's so accessible, so, you know, the doctor's mysterious, he's a type of, he's not a guy, um, you know, he's a special creature, I don't even know whether he even, he even has a corporeal being, he may present this to everyone, but he may exist in a totally different plane, so he's not a guy. Uh, but if he was a guy, um, he'd have my face and he'd be really nice. Yeah. <laughs> Clara just helps the... him out this year with the social situations. Yes. So Clara teaches him how yeah. to interact with humans right. a little bit more this season. Yes. So he knows the right things to say in the right situations. What do you think he thinks when he's with the human one-on-one? -on -one? Like, what is he thinking? Is he thinking, oh, they're <laughs> interesting, they're like adorable pets? Or do you think he... <laughs> Do, do you think he feels like they're on the same level in some way, or...? I think he thinks, do I look bored? <laughs> <laughs> My first instinct then was, hurry up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it's great to see, because actually Clara does help him with his social skills. Tries to make him more, more of a, a, a welcome party guest. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what kind of a, you know, it's amazing. You know, I think with the, you know, with, with the doctor I play, what I, with regard to that kind of TARDIS question, I always felt he was the kind of guy who would say, you know, you walk through these doors, this is bigger on the inside, you come with me, and the whole of time and space will be available to you. Come with me. And if you blink and you don't go, yeah, he's gone. Right. He doesn't wait for you. You know, you don't want to come, you know, get on your own life. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we can open the floor to some questions now. I'm sure that the people have questions that they want to ask. So let's mm -hmm. let's shine a light over there. Hello. Hello. What is it? Your Hello. microphone's right there. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. Stephen, it's a puppet of you. <laughs> <laughs> what is what is your name? Uh, puppet Laura. <laughs> Hello, puppet Laura. Uh, do you have a question? Yes. Oh, well, with the new doctor. And the new Missy, the mistress. Uh, I'm sorry, I was talking to Puppet Laura. Uh, <laughs> with the new doctor yes. <laughs> and a new mistress, with the new season coming along and how they interacted in the eight, last season, how will the dynamics be now since we know she's trying to be his best friend and he's awkward and different? <laughs> so, how will that dynamic change for season nine? I think that's a Stephen question. Well, I mean, it, it's it, the way, she, way Missy comes back into the Doctor's life is, is not something you're probably going to predict. Uh, it's, it's very, very different. Um, I don't think this is a new idea, by the way, the Doctor and the Master being good friends. I, one of the first things I did when I started writing this was go back and look at the John Pertwee, Roger Delgado version. And they abs. That's the sound of elderly fans clapping. It's a little bit slower. Um, the, uh, the first thing I did is that they, uh, they absolutely play it as best friends. You know, one of them wants to blow up the world, one of them wants to stop it blowing up, but hey, you can't let those little things get in the way, can you? And you imagine they sort of go to a gentleman's club and have a, uh, share some brandy afterwards. So it's, that's not new. That's so, uh, we, we do play in it, but she, don't worry, she's just as violent 
psychopathic as ever, in a lovely way. Um, excellent. Thank you, Papa Laura. Thanks. And I assume human Laura as well. It's right. a very convincing human you've got with you. <laughs> Hello. Oh my god. Hi, I just suppose I just have wanted to see if Jenna and Stephen remember me from my Make-A-Wish in 2013. Oh yes, hello again. Hi. <laughs> and that just, that just that really helped me get through a lot. And what I want to ask is this is for everyone, that every villain, hero, companion, even writer, has something iconic about them. About the character, about the, about the way, about the tone to the, that they put to the story. What do you think is yours? That is a way better question than anything I said. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think is iconic about? What do you think is iconic about your doctor? Uh, you mean mine specifically, or yeah. eyebrows? I just said eyebrows. eyebrows. <laughs> <laughs> You don't get to say Peter is eyebrows. <laughs> this uh, uh, eyebrow thing apparently is iconic. I don't, I don't get it myself. But uh. <laughs> Jenna, what about you? Oh my goodness, uh, I have, I have uh, no idea. Eyes. Eyes. <laughs> eyes. Yeah. Huge eyes. <laughs> Big eyes. <laughs> eyebrow, eyes. Michelle, uh, lips. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously. Yeah. When she plants, when she, when she absolutely plants on him in that episode. Yeah. And did, was it, was it, and I almost kind of wondered if I were to watch back, is there even a second where he was like, oh, I know who this is? Or it's still. Because it freaks him out whenever someone shows him affection. <laughs> yeah, the question is who kissed who? Um, <laughs> and, and who hung on? Uh, and just didn't let go. And I think if you do play it back, and a few of you I imagine have often, um, you'll see that it's a Peter is really, there's some suction there. Yeah, yeah he's, he's definitely pulling her in. There was one take where Michelle held my hand yes. throughout the kiss. Uh, That's what you didn't see, was that I was actually also holding Clara's hand as I... That answers a lot about the dynamic of season nine, then. Did somebody, did somebody just say that's odd? No? That's hot. She said yeah, that's hot. Because I don't think it's odd at all. No, she said that's hot. She yeah. thought that was hot. Hi. Yeah. Um, yes, what is your name? Hi, my name's Bridget. Oh, what's your question, Bridget? Uh, my question's for Jenna. Um, I was wondering how you transitioned from working with Matt Smith to Peter Capaldi and how you felt about it. Well, it was a pretty um, uh, roller coaster day. I think there's, it's fair to say there aren't many shows where um, you switch the lead up to mid scene. Um, <laughs> literally with a handshake and a swap of the costume watch because there was only one of them. Um, uh, but it was, uh, it was, it just happened. And uh, we came back and began to shoot a whole new Doctor Who in the in the January. But um, um, yeah, it was a it was a it was a roller coaster. It was it was feeling saying goodbye to to one dear friend and very excited and hello to another all at the same time. It is sort of the magic of the show that I think, as you know, if you're a diehard fan of the show, it's always heartbreaking when you watch a regeneration episode. And you cry about it for a couple days, and then you're a little, yeah, I am crying, okay? Uh, <laughs> and so, uh, Mike knows what I'm talking about. Uh, and so, then after a couple episodes, you're like, oh, this new guy is, I don't know if I, have, I can't let him in my. And then after like two episodes, you're like, okay, he's pretty good. And then, by, <laughs> you know, then halfway through the season, you're like, don't go anywhere! Like, <laughs> It, it, it's this is this interesting, this like loss and but, but getting new people and accepting new people. I mean, it's it's it's, it's just life, you know. The show is just life. Um, what is your name and question? Hi, uh, my name is Allie, and my question is for everyone. Um, what are your opinions on eventually having a female doctor? <laughs> You said everyone, but I don't think I get to say. Um, I'll start with uh, Stephen. Well, there is no vacancy. It's worth pointing out you just met Peter Capaldi and said, yeah! when you leave, 
Um, uh, there is no vacancy. Um, well, I think my opinion is fairly obvious from the show, isn't it? Uh, what I think about the possibility and whether it would work or not. I think, I think I've expressed myself about as clearly as I could in the context of the show. If you're not reading the subtext, then uh, how mend you? But, uh, but believe me, some people aren't reading that subtext because it's too subtle. Um, yeah, and I'm not going to reveal, reveal myself as a man today. <laughs> that would be such a disappointment, especially for Jack Davenport. Jen, <laughs> <laughs> do, do, do you want to take a shot? Um, I'm sure it will happen at some point, but um, uh, like Stephen said, I think it's just about casting the, the right actor, and um, um, I, don't, I don't think Peter's going to change costume or anything. <laughs> <laughs> Point. Well, maybe I should do a drag episode one, <laughs> just to try it out. Um, yes! Don't say that with Stephen here. It will oh happen. God. You just totally have to do one. like a Dr. Doubtfire episode. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think that the doctor's sister should have been. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Uh, oh, hello. You guys look amazing. Dr. Donna, fantastic. Yeah, in a thousand years, when Doctor Who is found again, everyone will remember all of you. <laughs> uh, Mark Simon, I have a question for you. As a writer, what is your greatest inspiration in literature and, and what, is you, what do you pull most from in, in time? Oh, this is such a depressing answer. Um, <laughs> I probably don't <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's what made me want to be a writer, it is. I'm not making this up for the sake of this panel. Uh, I, I, I saw Dr. Who and said, look, that's amazing. One day I shall run that show. Uh, my parents were surprised. I hadn't spoken until then. Um, uh, so it was, I, I, I was so inspired by Dr. Who. I remember, I mean, the, what got me interested in television was the fact that the Doctor changed. And I couldn't understand why. <laughs> I thought, well, why would they do that? And eventually my dad explained to me because one actor wanted to leave and another one wanted to come in. I thought, that's interesting. I didn't know they could do that. <laughs> and then they had to you know, deal with the idea that somebody would be Doctor Who and then choose not to be Doctor Who. And I've had to live that, through that as an adult as well. It's quite frightening. Um, but no, it, it really sort of is. I mean, the other influences as a writer are... Uh, if you ever want to know how to write a screenplay, uh, forget all those how to write a screenplay books and just read William Goldman. Uh, everything, every screenplay William Goldman's ever written is amazing. So that's worth reading. Neil Simon is uh, a god of comedy. If you want to understand how comedy works, uh, read Neil Simon. But really, above all, I think the horror of Fang Rock is really cool. Uh, that's a Doctor Who story for those of you uh, yeah, 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 who are new. So, so uh, it's a slightly boring answer, but that's the one. Mr. Arthur Conan Doyle, Neil Simon, for good measure. Uh, do you have a question? I do, I do. Um, my question is for Peter. <laughs> so, with your expert experience in all of the previous seasons, if, do you think that the Twelfth Doctor would ever want to com uh, travel with any other companion, and who would it be? <laughs> <laughs> Um, I think that, uh, uh, Donna, Donna. I think that he would like, <laughs> he loves traveling with Clara, I think that's, uh, the special bond he has, uh, is with Clara. It's just because we're going back to work on Mondays, is why yeah. <laughs> I've got to say that, um, but I think he'd like to, uh, see his granddaughter again. Oh, good answer. Oh, that was a perfect answer, you sly dog. No one could get mad at that. You were like, eh, Kylie Minogue. No, but you went. You went, granddaughter. Hi, what is your name? Hello, oh. my name is Christopher. Uh, and you've come to the wrong panel, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God! <laughs> we're on in the ballroom in about half an hour. 
Uh, my question is for all three actors, but in particular, Ms. Gomez. <laughs> yeah, it's because you said that. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> could you give us a brief description of what your character's idea of a perfect day would be? Day? Yeah. Yeah, like a perfect Sunday. Like, what's a perfect day? Starting with Michelle. For, uh, okay. Uh, um... I just like squashing big bugs, um, um, probably in the shape of, oh, let me see the biggest bug of all. Um, I think she could probably, her perfect day would be starting with some tea, um, maybe a little croissant, and then slapping Wonder Woman in the face. <laughs> just Jenna? I suppose it's um, teaching a bit of Jane Austen, followed by walking into the stationery cupboard, opening the door to the TARDIS, um, and then jetting off to like Jupiter um, or Uranus or some oh, strange wow. planet from afar. So, <laughs> so, so Jupiter, so then Jupiter. Jupiter, then. let's yeah, focus. Jupiter. Let's focus on Jupiter. <laughs> Um, uh, kill some octopus-shaped aliens, save the world, um, have a cup of tea with the doctor, and get an early night. Nice. So you do that a lot. Uh, yeah. Peter? Uh, I think I'd probably get up, have a nice big uh, pot of coffee, read the papers, think this is really relaxing, I really like this, and then get really bored. <laughs> and look up into the night sky, which would be odd because it's in the morning, but I could be... <laughs> <laughs> on another planet where morning is night. And I would think, yes, let me go to a planet where morning is night. Uh, yes, I think he would just, uh, every day he just starts off wanting to have a nice quiet time and then thinks, oh, this is dull. It's all out there. Let me go out there and go to the planet Scaro and see where yeah, they're going to. Why, why do you think he's so enamored of humans? Budgetary reasons. <laughs> <laughs> very, very tough. Very tough. Thank you, Christopher. Hello. What is your name? Uh, my name is Chloe. And what is your question? Given the opportunity that the Doctor and Sherlock have an episode together, which should happen, just saying, how do you, Peter, think that the personalities would work out? Like, how would you react? Uh, more cleverly. <laughs> <laughs> be a long conversation about belly, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I think the first time, one of the first times I met Stephen, I thought I was really clever, and I was like, well, I mean, the doctor's just space Sherlock, and he was like, no, he's not! <laughs> because the, and then I immediately shrank down because I just said a dumb thing to someone I admired, and then... Uh, <laughs> So the Doctor has compassion for everyone, and Sherlock has compassion for no one, basically. Yeah, yeah so, he, they're, they're very different. Yeah. yeah. I'm not sure how well they'd get on. Uh, but for the record, just for the record, no one believes this, I have no problem with the idea of them meeting. It's all the rest of them that have got a problem with it. <laughs> I'd do anything for a laugh, I'm a tart. <laughs> <laughs> not an actual tart, no offers. <laughs> Hi, what's your name? Hey, my name is Ethan. Uh, I have a question for probably Moffat or Jenna. Um, Jenna. Moffat. Moffat. <laughs> Stephen, it's fine. Moffat. <laughs> uh, Jenna's character has been divided into multiple versions, as we saw with two previous before her character came on. Will we ever see maybe more versions of Clara's character from time and space? Well, we'd never tell you what we're going to do in advance, would we? But uh, Doctor Who magazine has done a, a rather good uh, uh, comic strip version of that. Uh, so if, if you want to see that, it's, it's actually available there. It's really quite good. Good answer, Muffin. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody in my family is called Moffat. It doesn't feel very specific. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Hi, what's your question? Um, my question is for Jenna. Um, is, oh, <laughs> sorry, I got nervous for a second. No, don't be nervous. They're very normal. I'm uh, poking him right now. He's a person. <laughs> You're safe. This is the safest place in the world right now. Um, this is for Janet. Um, 
was being a companion something you always like dreamed of doing or was it like a happy accident? It was a very happy accident. Um, I, I was I was one of the Demai children, so it was never on in my in my childhood. Um, so my, uh, my my first experience was literally just getting Stephen Moffat's sides of playing three different characters in one audition, and um, I just had so much fun. I loved it, and um, had a couple of meetings with Matt, and um, it was uh, it was so surprising how many different versions of one scene you can play with and how sharp and witty and just fun and funny the, the writing was and is. <clears throat> um, <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, so it was an extremely happy and very lucky accident. How did, did you feel your life changed from the second it started airing with you on the show? I mean, it changed. I mean, it changed really from the, from that first audition. But it's the storytelling that you get to do, and the adventures, and the sets that you walk onto, and the mad old stunts, and um, aliens, and green screen. You know, the whole experience is really like nothing else. And then you step out of it for a second and come to places like this, and um, get greeted by lots of very cool people. It's um, it's just it's just incredible storytelling at its best. With somebody described it to me as an imagination explosion. I, um, I like that description. Yeah, because you guys can basically just shoot in a bubble and you work most of the year. And so you probably, I would imagine it's very difficult for you to see the effect that the show is having on people until you come to an event like this. What's it like over in England? Is it, is it similar? Is, is it, are people similar? Are the cons similar over there? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> what did you imagine they were like? Well, because when... Because when, uh, I remember when, when Matt and Karen and Arthur first came over, yeah. it completely melted their brains because people, you know, they, they did that thing in New York where people waited in line for two days outside and they were like, oh my God, people in England aren't like this. And it really, like they were excited, but it also freaked, like they were like jolted. Oh, I see you mean, uh, yeah. like in terms of the reaction. Yeah, it's, it, you know, uh, Americans are much more generous and outgoing. And, you know, the way we British people um, enjoy themselves in public is secretly. <laughs> <laughs> you try not to let it show. I do that too. I mean, you know, I mean, I can't move my face. It never, I mean, people think I'm grumpy all the time. It's just, I, I don't know how it works. <laughs> and that's, that's what playing to a room full of British people saying, they'll come out saying, that was absolutely hilarious. <laughs> I couldn't start laughing. <laughs> So, yeah, there is that. But people are very excited about Doctor in Britain, too. Yeah. And they are. But also, we, we get plucked from this uh, bubble in Cardiff to here. You know, in Cardiff, we're just making a show and working. And then suddenly we're here and there's a room full of 7,000 people and there's that lady with all those badges. And it's really, uh, it's really yeah. incredibly exciting and uh, different and strange. And why she got so many badges? <laughs> What's that, butt lady? That's a badge. Yeah, she's butt lady. <laughs> It's the oh, most badges. Yeah. This is my friend Karen. Okay. Hi, Karen. Um, my, uh, my question is for Mr. Cap well, first I wanted to mention Mr. Capaldi, because I just wanted to show that I could say it right. Um, <laughs> did you like the button that I gave you yesterday? It was great. I got a fabulous badge. I said, not a hugger. <laughs> <laughs> and my question is for Mr. Moffat, uh, Stephen. Hello. Uh, oh, Mr. Moff is fine. He's going to knock at me, it doesn't work. <laughs> I noticed that you made Matt's uh, doctor very special by having his face for the longest amount of years. How are you going to show the love to Peter? No, well, you mean I showed my love to, to, to Matt by trapping him for a thousand years in a village? Yes. <laughs> You have a very strange way of expressing love. <laughs> I aged him to death. That's not how you express affection. You well, also made marriage, it I suppose. Um, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Do you know what? Do you know what? I'm not going to answer you because there's an answer coming up in the show. Uh oh. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you. Did you have another question about later? You all said. It's good to see you again. All right. Hi. Hello. Um, I was wondering if you had any tips for aspiring actors, just to all of you. Um, for aspiring actors? Go into hosting is what I do. Yeah. Uh, I'm a crappy actor. Read a lot. Read a lot of 
books and read as much as you can. As somebody Fine. who's endured a lot of rejection, <laughs> I'm now an inspiration to the younger clients because I keep getting squashed like a bug out there and I keep coming back. So um, my, my tip would be just, just never give up. And, and this world is abundant and there's enough for everyone. And if you do give up, somebody else is going to take your spot anyway. So if you really just believe in yourself and keep going, you'll, you'll get your five minutes of fame. Peter, do you want to, do you have an answer for that? Do you have an answer for that? Hey. For young actors, yeah. Learn your lines. Learn your lines. <laughs> I gotta say, just really quickly, I know you weren't seriously asking me, but I do have a suggestion for you, which is the technology has basically made it possible for you to just make the thing that you want, you know? So just make stuff, make stuff, don't be afraid to make stuff, don't be afraid to fail, make stuff with your friends, find someone who's like a writer and a producer, form a group, put it on YouTube, put your stuff out in the world, and when you start pursuing that path, like, answers will start to reveal themselves to you, so you, there are no excuses anymore. Just make the stuff that you want to see exist in the world, and then if the business catches up with you, great. And if not, you're making the stuff you want, and that's, that should make you happy. So that's my advice for that. Do that. I'm not trying to, don't do that. I'm not trying to do an Oprah moment. You get a car, and you get a car. <laughs> I know someone who's taken that car. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Um, my name is Jericho Salazar, mm -hmm. and I'm the Grinch. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, I love that that's the aside of the Grinch. Um, okay, uh, I want to ask this. Well, first off, I love you all, you guys. Thank you for coming here. You're amazing. So, can you just wake that lady up? See behind you? Oh, <laughs> We love Doctor Who. Um, I want to ask you, Peter. Yeah. Whenever you become the doctor, like no, no. Like, whenever you are the doctor, do you ever feel all the other doctors inside of you burning? Like, <laughs> like, like some residue they left, the sensation, their souls, I guess. First of all, that's a very sexy question. Second of all, I can't stop watching your fingers. <laughs> Do I feel the other doctors? <laughs> inside me. Inside me. Deep. Deep inside you. <laughs> well, I often feel John Baker and Pete Ng. <laughs> From time to time. Um, yeah, sometimes you do something and you think that's, that's, that's very Tom or David or John, uh, and, uh, but I don't sort of consciously try to, uh, to, to emulate any of them. I think they're all wonderful, uh, but certainly they, 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 they echo throughout the, the, the show. So we do in the scripts, there are moments of resonance where there are bits and pieces of things that I know have, have begun with, a, with another doctor. Uh, and I'm always very happy to play those moments. Excellent. Thank you, Mr. Grinch. Um, we have time for one more question, which is you. What is your name, sir? Hi, my name is Gabe, and I just want to say you guys are all wonderful people and everything. I appreciate you guys coming down here. And Jenna, I just want you to know that I can be the impossible boy to your impossible girl. Because oh, oh. you're like one of my favorite companions. But my question goes back to you and Peter. Um, out of just being in this series, what is, I guess, like the most amazing thing that has happened to you that you were expecting to come from the show? Uh, that I wasn't expecting. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's just an extraordinary experience, the whole thing. I mean, I didn't realize the show, and people tell you that the show is successful overseas and that it, that it was catching on in America, but I didn't realize it was to this scale. You know, so to come here and find this warmth and affection for something that I, I that goes all the way back to my childhood and I find myself in the center of now uh, is absolutely extraordinary. But I, I, 
you know, the most amazing thing that happens is that you, I get the affection for the whole 50 years pointed in my direction. And that's a great position to be in. Thank you very much for your question. I want to show you a couple more things before uh, we let you uh, continue sitting there, I guess. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, I don't know if you guys... Have, do you want to answer that? Do you have an answer for that? Did you just hear that? But, yeah. Oh, sorry. Did you, did you want no, 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 no. Are you sure? Sure. Because you can, and obviously that guy totally loves you. I was just going to say um, how much I love Peter Capaldi and how yes. he's my, one of my favourite human beings and one of the best bits about the job, sorry, to embarrass you terribly, is going to work every day in the TARDIS with this guy. Wow. Excellent. Yeah. Thank you. It's called the TARDIS. It can travel anywhere in time and space. 